What's up everybody, my name is Danon and welcome to Honestly. Today we're checking out two wireless mice that have design and ergonomics in mind. The first one is the older but well acclaimed Logitech MX Master 3 versus the brand new Pro Click from Razer. At $100 US each, which one is the better mouse? Well, let's get honest. I'm gonna be looking at three things. How do the mice feel compared to each other in everyday use? What are the different functionalities and features you get with one mouse over the other? And then the third is other considerations you should keep in mind before picking up either of these mice. So starting with how do they feel? Well, because they're designed for ergonomics, they're just gonna feel a lot different than what you're used to. They're gonna feel a lot bigger than what you're used to. But with the Razer Pro Click, it still feels like I am in control of this mouse versus the MX3 where it feels like this mouse is is in control of me. Both of these mice look beautiful and have a futuristic design. Me personally, I like the Razer because it looks cleaner, but the Logitech looks a lot more futuristic. Let me know in the comments below which one you guys think looks cooler. And unfortunately, both of these mice were designed with right-handers in mind. Sorry, left-handed folks, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. And because they were designed with ergonomics in mind, they are, again, a lot taller than you're used to to prevent your wrist from sagging and slouching onto the table, which creates that wrist pain. The curvature on each mouse is about the same, sloping from left to right, but the Pro Click is the shorter mouse overall. However, even though it's shorter, it's got the bigger booty, and so what that means is that when you put your hand on it, the mouse terminates further down and further out on that padding area below your pinky. Now, when it comes to overall width, though, the MX3 is the wider mouse because of this giant wing that you see right here, but it's not just an area where you rest your thumb. That actually function functions as another button, which we'll get to in a minute. In terms of material, the Logitech MX3 uses rubber on the entire mouse except for on the buttons, whereas on the Razer, it uses a textured rubber on the left where your thumb rests and on the right where your pinky rests, but the entire body itself is all made out of plastic and it's this smooth one-piece plastic piece which looks really clean. The Razer Pro Click is lighter than the Logitech MX Master 3, with the Pro Click coming in at 0.23 pounds or 106 grams, versus the MX3, which is 0.31 pounds or 141 grams, which doesn't seem like that much on paper, but you really do feel that weight difference in everyday use. When it comes to sensor precision, both mice are pretty good. I think most people will be happy with them, but the Pro Click, it feels a little bit snappier, I think because it's lighter. But the benefit of the MX3 is that this sensor can actually track on glass, whereas the Pro Click, you can't do that. Now, if you are someone who needs extra precision, and I'm not just talking about gamers, I'm talking about people who draw and you just need fine-tuned control over that cursor, I would recommend that you check out a wireless gaming mouse because their sensors are just a step above compared to these mice. Like this is the Logitech G900 and I can noticeably feel more accuracy out of this sensor compared to these two. For me personally, I have small to medium sized hands and because of that, the Pro Click, even though it's got a bigger booty and fills out my hand more, because of the overall shorter height, my pinky naturally rests on the mouse pad, which is really good because it acts as a fulcrum or like an anchor point for really precise movements. The Logitech MX3, however, when I put my hand on it, my hand is just taking a ride, right? It just swallows my entire hand, and if I want that same kind of leverage with my pinky, I have to shift my entire hand to the right, and it feels a little bit awkward, and I don't think that's how I'm supposed to hold the mouse anyway. So for overall everyday use, if you've got small, medium-sized hands, I think you would like the feel of the Razer Pro Click a little bit better. For those of you guys sensitive to noise, this is how the buttons sound on each mouse. When it comes to the features of the mice, the MX3 blows the Pro Click out of the water. And in many rights, the Pro Click is quite boring and the charger is outdated because it charges using micro USB versus USB C. And it's kind of, that's funny because this mouse came out like a month ago. 
The battery life on this thing is about 200 hours when you use the dongle. However, on Bluetooth, you'll get 400 hours. So both of those battery life stats are pretty impressive. When it comes to the buttons, again, it's pretty boring. You get left click, right click. You got a scroll wheel and that scroll wheel acts like another button. And then you can do tilt left, tilt right. And then by your thumb, you've got a front and back button. And then you've got this button on top here, which you can customize, but typically it's used for DPI adjustment. And that's pretty much it. Oh, one thing I'm missing is that on the bottom here is a housing for your USB dongle, which is really cool. It's connected by a magnet as well. It's not a very strong magnet, but it's a magnet, so it won't just pop out if you open it. Um, and that's better than the MX3 because the MX3 has no way to carry around the dongle without losing it. There's no way to attach it to this. But when it comes to the other functions and features, so on a full charge, this thing claims it can get 70 days worth of battery, which is nuts. And I had the Master 2S and yeah, I haven't, I owned that for a year, I never charged it. Um, so that's, the battery life is really impressive and it charges using USB-C. So quite nice, even though this thing is over a year old now. Um, when it comes to the buttons, it's got a left button click, right button click. It's got a scroll wheel, which is pretty unique. It feels okay. Um, and then the, the wheel can act like a button as well, although it can't shift left and right like on the Razer. You do have a front and mouse, a front and back button here by your thumb. And then where your thumb rests on this big pad here, it also acts like another button. It's really easy to press because your thumb is always resting on it anyway. However, the two really unique functions of this mouse is the side scroll, as well as what they call smart shift slash mag something. I'll you can see it down here, I forget what it's called, mag something, um, but smart shift and mag something. And basically what that means is if you are scrolling your mouse wheel and sometimes you wanna scroll fast, you really flick that thing, after a certain amount of pressure, at a certain amount of velocity, it'll unhinge itself and become an infinite scroll, allowing you to scroll very quickly through documents or long web pages. And that's very, very, very neat. I love this feature. And once you have it, it's really hard to go back because on something like this, you can throw it as much as you want, but you'll be fixed to three or four scrolls. Whereas this, you can reach the bottom of a hundred page document in literally a second. I mean, it's pretty incredible. But let's say you don't like that idea of when I flick it, it turns into an infinite scroll. Well, you can, this button here, you can't customize it, but it'll basically turn that on or off. And so if you wanna use it as a regular mouse, uh, mouse scroll wheel, you can do that. And if you wanna click it, it'll loosen it so it becomes a permanent infinite scroll for when you need that as well. So it doesn't have that smart shift technology. You can disable that in the software. Really, really neat, really cool. For the side scroll, in the, in the software, you can customize how this works in like eight different apps within the Logitech software. I wish it supported more, but it supports like eight major software programs. You can set it to different functionalities within those programs. Like for example, in Excel, I have it so that I can scroll sideways in spreadsheets. In Chrome, I have it so that I can scroll across different tabs. And in Premiere Pro, I have it set so that I can scroll through my footage very quickly. So again, a really, really neat productivity function and compared to the pro click i mean again it just blows it out of the water some other things that the mx3 has that the pro click does not is that it's got this thing called logitech flow and i don't use it that much anymore because i use a different kvm switch but if you have two computers that are on the same network using how you can set it up and customize it how you'd like but essentially you can have the same mouse and break into the other computer. So if your mouse is here and you've got two screens, you can use it. And once you get to like a certain corner or you hit a certain shortcut, it'll jump over to the other computer and you can use the mouse on that computer. And then you can copy files and bring them over to the other PC. It's really neat how that's kind of built into this mouse. Um, there are There's software out there where you can do that for free, but the fact that you can do it with a mouse with Logitech's mouse is just another productivity function that you get that the ProClick just doesn't offer. And now for other considerations before you guys pick up either of these mouse. And let's start with the ProClick. So the ProClick is this beautiful ivory white, but I'm a little bit hesitant to recommend this because the white might, might not stay white forever. And just as a cautionary tale, the Master 2S, the previous version of this mouse, they actually had a white version and a lot of people complained about discoloration happening on that mouse pretty quickly. Now, to be fair, the ProClick uses plastic on top and not this rubbery material, but if their trackpad is 
any indication. I bought the corresponding Razer mouse pad that goes with this mouse, and after two weeks of use, there is already a brown spot developing where my wrist rests. Now, I promise, I'm not doing weird things. I promise I wash my hands regularly and yet it's starting to brown already. So if that's the kind of quality control that you know the trackpad has, I'm a little bit worried about what's gonna happen to this plastic in the long run. The other consideration is just the price. For 100 bucks, you can see the kind of unique functionality you'd get out of this mouse compared to the Razer Pro Click. So if you want something with ergonomics, you can probably get something on Amazon for cheaper than what you could buy this for. The only thing this really has going for it, I think, is the looks. It, it is beautiful. The MX3, other considerations for the MX3. I feel like I was lied to by YouTubers. So I had the 2S, as a matter of fact, I had two of them, and I was like, oh, I'm reading all these reviews, and everyone's like, oh, the three is amazing, you should totally upgrade. So I sold both of my twos, which is stupid me, I'm a tech tuber, I should know, I should keep these, and I ended up picking this up before I received this. And within seconds, I realized that I was lied to, because this scroll wheel has an issue. I'm not talking about it feels weird, I'm talking about an actual scrolling. Every second to third scroll, you'll get a half scroll on the screen. And that's not an issue with my mouse, that is a widespread issue with this mouse in general. You can find it on forums, my friends who have the MX3, they also say that it happens to them as well. And if you're using the smart shift where you're flipping it and it turns into a infinite scroll, it might not be that big of a deal for you. But if you're someone like me who wants precision and then wants to go crazy, right? Um, it, it does matter, and I'm like, hey, I paid $100, and if they just got that right, this would have been the perfect mouse, because in so many ways, it's better than the, the 2S. The, the scroll wheel is less ratchety, there's less shake noise, it's a little bit smaller in the hand, which feels so much better than the 2S, which really was just a behemoth thing. The buttons here are on a much better placement. Uh, in so many ways, the 3 is better, except for in the scroll wheel, and it's just disappointing. So it might be a deal breaker to some of you guys out there. And then the last consideration, and I've already touched on this before, is that if you're somebody who's looking for ultimate precision and you have multiple uses, again, this sensor is good, but it's not nearly as precise as a cabled mouse or even a mouse that's designed for gaming. And because of that, if you guys are looking for an extra precise mouse that can also double as a productivity mouse, I do recommend the G900 because it's got a ratchet here where you can ratchet and it'll turn into an infinite scroll and you can click it and it'll turn back into a regular scroll. And just having that alone, being able to scroll through documents really quick, increases productivity levels like crazy for me. And at the same time, it's so precise that I can do everything I need to excellently and easily and very well. And it's priced about the same as both of these mice, I think at about $100. So yeah, if you are looking for something that can do it all, I would check out the G900. The things you do lose out though is battery life, the ability to connect to multiple devices and the aesthetics and um, the ergonomics, right? So yeah, you do lose out on a lot, but you get that multi-platform, multi-use experience with a mouse like this versus having to buy like two, one for productivity and one for gaming. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe as I'm trying really hard to grow this channel and I would love your guys' support. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and as always, stay honest.